Hello, hello, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be doing another if you didn't like this book then I suggest trying out this book instead book recommendations kind of video. <laughs> I have loved in the past doing a lot of book recommendations like if you like this book check out this book and I have a bunch of those kind of video recommendations I'll link them all down below if you've missed them but I have once done this kind of video in the past where I said if you didn't like this book maybe you can check out this other book because I do find some similarities with some books that I didn't enjoy and I'm like man you know this book did this same exact thing but a lot better and so I think this is also a really unique way of recommending books because maybe if you are like me and you disliked some of these books but you liked the concept or you felt like there was a lot of potential there and you would like to see that done differently in a different book then I have some book recommendations for you. But before we do jump into the books I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Native for sponsoring today's video. Native has launched a brand new product and I'm stoked to introduce to you the new body and face mineral sunscreen. It has SPF 30 coverage and it protects against UVA and UVB rays. It's available in two delicious but subtle scents, coconut and pineapple and rosé. And it's also available unscented. It's lightweight, non-sticky, non-greasy, hydrating, moisturizing formula. It's dermatologist tested, reef safe, 97% mineral and plant-based ingredients and moisturizing formula. Non on nano zinc, vegan and cruelty free. It's easy to apply with no white residue, making it easy to blend into all skin tones. It glides smoothly over any hair for a flawless application and it looks great under makeup. I personally got the coconut and pineapple and this smells so freaking incredible. I can't even imagine how good the rosé one smells. And this one, it really does just feel so light on my skin and so airy. Like there's nothing I hate more than when you go to put on sunscreen and you're just covered in that white goopiness for so long and you just have to rub your arm until it freaking burns. You use three pumps of the product to cover your face and neck to ensure sufficient protection. Always remember to reapply sunscreen every two hours. This summer, I know we're all looking forward to getting some vitamin D, but it's also very important to protect your skin and what better way to do that than with Native's new sunscreen. Hot girl summer is coming right at ya. Native is so excited to be launching their new sunscreen that they're giving you 30% off both face and body. It's normally $36 for both, but you can get it for $25 when you use my code GABBYREADS2, which gives you 30% off. Make sure to check it out and protect your skin this summer. And thank you so much once again to Native for sponsoring today's video. All right, now without any further ado, let's just jump in to the book recommendations. The very first one is going to be If You Did Not Like Dr. Sleep by Stephen King, like me. Um, then I think I have two other Stephen King books that I think you might like instead. I think instead you should check out Salem's Lot or The Institute. And the reason why I picked these books specifically is because in Dr. Sleep, we're kind of following this young girl that has these like magical abilities or like not necessarily magical abilities but she's just she has these certain powers and abilities right which i feel like is a similar thing in the institute because in the institute we're following a ton of these different kids we're following our main character's name is luke and they all have these special abilities and all of these kids are being kept at this place called the institute where they are like studying them and shit and i just find that to be pretty similar about both of these books like the fact that we're following a young kid that has these abilities but I feel like in the institute it's done a lot better for me personally I just wasn't like it wasn't my favorite aspect of the book in Dr. Sleep but it's probably the only aspect of the book that I enjoyed but it's still done so much better in the institute and then I compare it to Salem's Lot because in the book Dr. Sleep we're kind of dealing with this almost cult group of people in this book and they're kind of like I don't know if they are actually vampires or not but they're vampire like and so I think if you didn't really like that in this book like I definitely was not a fan of the cult like vampire group of people in this book I thought it was super boring then I think you should check out Salem's Lot because I feel like in this book it's a lot more interesting it's done so much better and I just feel like classic Stephen King as I'm told is usually a lot better than the modern Stephen King I mean I know the Institute is actually pretty recent and I think this is his most recently published work that I've really enjoyed but you know I you can't go wrong with the more classic Stephen King books like they're just 
superior. My next one's gonna be if you did not like the book Baby Teeth by Zoj Stage, which, oh my god, this is a book that I gave one star and I absolutely despised it, then I think you should check out The Push by Ashley Adrian because this is a book that I was actually really hesitant to read because everybody was comparing it to Baby Teeth and saying it was a very similar plot and premise. And if you didn't know anything about what either of these books are about, Baby Teeth is about this, it follows this mother who has this daughter who is just like the fucking spawn of Satan, is constantly like being disrespectful, she's like lighting shit on fire, she's just like the worst nightmare child you can imagine, right? And then a similar thing is happening in The Push where we're following this young mom who kind of has this child only because her husband really wants a family but she's not really sure how she feels about being a mother herself, and then her daughter despises her and she has a really complicated relationship with her daughter and this book The Push is a lot more I don't know it's a lot more serious of a book I feel like because Baby Teeth I think it's meant to be just this like fun crazy thriller but in this book it's more like a psychological drama and it's really a character study on this mom and how this having this child is taking such a toll on her mentally and the push is just it's one of the best books that i've ever read like this is everything that i was hoping baby teeth would be and so if you were disappointed by baby teeth in any way don't let it put you off from reading the push like the push is so freaking good so much better this is everything that i wanted baby teeth to be next one is going to be if you didn't like the soulmate equation by christina lauren then i think you should check out the one by john mars and i know you're like wait these are two completely different genres you crazy well i know the soulmate equation is a romance and then the one is a sci-fi thriller book but I think if you liked the concept in the soulmate equation, like taking this test and finding out who your soulmate is, I mean, it's, it works a little bit different in both of these books because in the soulmate equation, they take this test and they get like a match of like how, how much compatibility they have with someone. So they'll get a percentage of like how compatible they are with people. And it's like really incredibly rare to get higher than a 90%. And I do think the whole like DNA match thing is the most interesting part about the soulmate equation. I just wasn't a huge fan of the characters and the romance that's actually happening in this book. But if you really like that concept and you're looking for it in another book, then I recommend The One by John Mars because this takes place in a futuristic world and it's like a sci-fi thriller where we can take a DNA test and find out who The One is for us, like our number one soulmate. So it works a little bit different because I think this book is implying that there's only one person for everyone out there where in the other book it's kind of like a compatibility test. But yeah, in this one it's this wild thriller where we follow a bunch of different characters. There's a lot of romance in this book as well, so if you want romance, like there's some good there's some good romance in this book too, but it's mostly this thriller because there's some shocking plot twists. I can just tell you one of these characters, it's not a spoiler, but one of these characters is a serial killer, so you're following him trying to figure out his match and that's really interesting and I just think the one is so much better than the soulmate equation I mean granted they are completely different genres <laughs> but if you're looking for something like that in another book then read the one. Oh my gosh this is like a black mirror episode it's so much fun next one that I have is if you did not like the luminous dead then I think you need to read into the drowning deep because when I got into reading The Luminous Dead. I just ended up being really disappointed by this book. Like everyone was hyping this book up so much. I was just expecting to love it because this is kind of like this underwater underworld and in The Luminous Dead there is a female female romance happening in this book which I was very excited about but I just feel like The Luminous Dead it never really got there like it was so much of this girl just like on this journey and it just got kind of boring it was so boring and so repetitive and i just felt like it was taking forever to get to anything interesting like there was like literally no action it was very repetitive with what she was doing down there and I just thought it was boring, like plain and simple, I thought The Luminous Dead was so boring. But if you're interested in something like this and you also still want a female-female romance and literally like basically a really good plot just like this book with action, then I would recommend Into the Drowning Deep because Into the Drowning Deep also has a female-female romance. It also has this creepy like underwater, uh, we don't know what's under there with them vibe. And it's freaking killer mermaids. Like. 
the whole <laughs> like the whole concept of Into the Drowning Deep is a lot more interesting to me and Into the Drowning Deep doesn't take as long to get interesting like once I was in like about 30% there was so much action in this book and I could not put it down and Into the Drowning Deep is really just oh my god it's so freaking good and so I just think if you like me were disappointed in The Luminous Dead then I think you should try out Into the Drowning Deep it might have been everything you're looking for. The next one I have is if you did not like The Wife Between Us, then I think you might like Too Good To Be True because both of these books are like nearly essentially the same plot. On the back of this book here, it says one love story, two marriages, three versions of the truth. And that is very similar <laughs> to the story that's happening in The Wife Between Us. They kind of both deal with these married couples who there's like another third person involved and you're trying to figure out how they're involved in the story. The description for this one says, when you read this book, you will make many assumptions. You will assume you are reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she is obsessed with her replacement. You will assume that you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle, but assume nothing. Like, this book really markets itself to you, like, you're not gonna be able to figure this shit out, but I don't know, I felt like this book wasn't really a thriller. It took, like, 200 plus pages for this book to get interesting, and I just really didn't like this book. I mean, the ending, I will say, the very, very ending of this book was a little bit surprising, but it definitely was not worth this entire book trying to figure this shit out like it was just it was so boring but I feel like Too Good to Be True is kind of similar to this book in the sense that it also has this tangled love triangle we're following this married couple and there's this other woman involved we don't know how she's involved in the story and this one was just a lot more interesting to me it was a lot more compelling and I was a much bigger fan of this plot twist and where this ended up going because The Wife Between Us does one of my least favorite thriller tropes ever and I just absolutely hate that so many thrillers do this trope. Um, I can't spoil it for you because it's a spoiler, but I just think if you didn't like The Wife Between Us, I think you might like Too Good To Be True. All right, the next one is gonna be If You Did Not Like Later by Stephen King, one of the latest Stephen King books. Then I think you should check out Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky because I know these are kind of different genres. Like this one is more of a crime thriller and this one is more of like a horror book. But I think if you liked in the book later, you really like this young boy and his relationship with his mom in this book and how close they are and then also this young boy kind of having these supernatural abilities like if that's something that you enjoyed reading from this book later then I think you would really enjoy Imaginary Friend and it's not that I didn't enjoy later I just think Imaginary Friend does what this book does so much better because in both of these stories we're following these very young boys who have these supernatural abilities who also have a really close relationship with their single mother and in Imaginary Friend this one is more of like a horror take on it we're following this young boy named Christopher who is only seven years old when he goes missing in the woods and he's out there for a few days before he's found and after he comes back he has all of these like sudden supernatural abilities that nobody really understands and it's just so creepy and done so well in this book. I mean, granted, I wasn't a huge fan of the ending of Imaginary Friend and I think it's important to note that this book is freaking massive. It's like 700 pages and the last 200 pages were so terrible for me, but the first 500 pages of this book is one of my favorite like horror books that I've ever read. So that's why it's kind of hard to recommend this book as a whole. But I just think this book is just so freaking good. It's so creepy. It's just so atmospheric. And I just think it takes this concept of a young boy with supernatural abilities that's really close with his mom and it does it so much better than later by Stephen King. But I guess if you're looking for a more crime thrillery kind of story instead of horror, then I would still recommend this. All right, my next one is going to be if you did not like May the Best Man Win, which is a very new release book, then I think you should check out You Should See Me in a Crown instead. And I only say this because I think if you liked the idea of May the Best Man Win of two love interests competing for the title of, I think it's Homecoming King in May the Best Man Win, then I think you would like that in You Should See Me in a Crown because it's these two girls competing for prom queen I'm pretty sure is what is it in this one I always get it confused if it's like prom or homecoming I really had high hopes for may the best man win and it ended up being such a disappointing book for me and the reason why I was so excited for this is because there's trans rep in this book and I was really hyped for may the best man win because it was following these two boys who are exes and they actually dated before Jeremy transitioned and now they're both competing for homecoming king against each other so I thought it would be this fun like hate to love vibe 
but this book just it, it's a little extreme like the things that they do to each other in a hateful way it just went way like it really crossed the line for me and some of the things they did were just not okay like it was not fun to read about and both of these characters were so hard to root for in this book because they were such assholes to each other and it was just a lot more vicious than I was anticipating like the cover really makes you think it's gonna be this like fun light-hearted contemporary romance and it's really not that and so I was just really taken aback by it but I do love the idea of love interests kind of competing for the title of like their school's you know their school dances crowd or whatever and so I thought it was done so much better in You Should See Me in a Crown and in this book we still do get the LGBT representation it's not trans representation but it's a female female romance happening in this book it's really really cute and there is some like hate to love because or I don't know if it's necessarily like hate to love but it's more like forbidden because they're both competing for the same thing so there's some like rivalry there I just thought that You Should See Me in a Crown was a lot more interesting and actually lighthearted and fun, whereas May the Best Man Win, it just made me feel really uncomfortable with how vicious they were towards each other in a not cool way. All right, and then the last one that I have is actually a book and a movie. Like, it's, it's like a, if you didn't like this book, then I think you should watch this movie because the movie does it so much better. And that's if you didn't like The Wrong Family by Taryn Fisher, then I think you should watch the movie Parasite. I can't really get into this without spoilers, but we were kind of talking about this in the book troop live show when we read The Wrong Family, and we were saying how there's an aspect of this book that's actually so similar to the movie Parasite and how Parasite does it a million times better. So I just think if you were interested in this book as a thriller, or even if you weren't interested, but if you were... I don't know how to say this. If there were some aspects of this thriller that interested you, that... Oh my god. I guess if there were any aspects in this thriller that interested you in any way, then I think you need to watch Parasite because Parasite just does it a million times better. Just trust, okay? Just trust. If you even if you if you liked this, if you didn't like this, watch Parasite. You know what? No matter what, just just watch Parasite. It's a really great movie. It's one of the best movies. You just need to see it. Like if you haven't seen Parasite, like what are you even doing? All right, that got a little out of control there at the end, but <laughs> those are all of the different book recommendations that I have for you today. So let me know if you agree with any of these, if you disagree with any of these, if you have, if you've seen any of your favorites on this list, let me know. If you had to compare like the most recent book that you read or the book that you're currently reading, if you had to compare it to another book by saying if you didn't like the book you're currently reading, you, sh you should try this instead or vice versa of that then like let me know in the comments. I'm always very curious about people's comparisons and how people find similarities and things. I just think it's really interesting. So yeah, thank you so much for watching today's video and thanks for hanging out and I will see you very soon with another one. Bye!